One of the more common objections to Christianity is that Jesus' divinity was created by later Christians. It's said that no one in early Christianity believed that Jesus was God. It was later believers at the Council of Nicaea who declared him to be God. You can see this popular meme passed on in movies like The Da Vinci Code. Obviously, there have been more sophisticated objections to Christian beliefs about Jesus' divinity. For example, not long ago, skeptical New Testament scholar Bart Ehrman published a couple of blog posts claiming that the idea that Jesus is Yahweh is completely foreign to the New Testament text and even to the ancient church. Ehrman says that it's more of a recent theological innovation. Ehrman writes, If someone knows better than I do, let me know. But I've never even heard the claim, let alone a discussion of it, that Jesus is Yahweh until very recently. I wonder if there are any early Christian theologians who have this view, or even later ones prior to recent times. Now, I'm sure Dr. Ehrman has to be aware of the statements of the Apostolic Fathers, which makes this statement so baffling to me. But hey, this gives us a good reason to go over some of the quotes of the early church fathers. There are many early theologians who said that Jesus was Yahweh, but for the sake of brevity, let's focus on seven of them. I'll start with Tertullian and we'll work our way back into the early 2nd century. Tertullian was a Christian apologist and theologian who lived between 155 and 220 AD. He wrote, For God alone is without sin, and the only man without sin is Christ, since Christ is also God. Now, with all of these church fathers, I could multiply quotes, but this one seems straightforward enough for our purposes. Now let's take a look at Clement of Alexandria, who wrote around 200 AD. Clement was a Christian theologian and philosopher who taught at the Catechetical School of Alexandria. Clement wrote, For it was not without divine care that so great a work was accomplished in so brief a space by the Lord, who, though despised as to appearance, was in reality adored the expiator of sin, the Savior, the Clement, the divine word, he that is truly most manifest deity, he that is made equal to the Lord of the universe, because he was the Son, and the word was in God. Manifest deity, equal to the Lord of the universe. It Sure seems enough that Clement thought that Jesus was Yahweh. Now let's take a look at Irenaeus. Irenaeus was a bishop in what is now modern day France, and he wrote extensively against the heresies of his time. He's considered to be one of the leading theologians of the second century. Writing it around 180 AD, he said, Christ Jesus is our Lord and God and Savior and King according to the will of the Invisible Father. And later on in the same treatise he wrote, Christ himself therefore together with the Father is the God of the living who spoke to Moses and was also manifest to the Father. Next up, there's Justin Martyr, a Christian apologist of the 2nd century. Justin wrote at around 150 AD, he said, Permit me first to recount the prophecies which I wish to do in order to prove that Christ is called both God and Lord of hosts. And he also wrote, The Father of the universe has a Son, who also, being the first begotten Word of God, is even God. But we can go back earlier still. Ignatius was a bishop at the church in Antioch and also reportedly a disciple of John the Apostle. He died in 117 AD. In a letter to the Ephesian church, Ignatius wrote, For our God, Jesus the Christ, was conceived by Mary according to God's plan, both from the seed of David and of the Holy Spirit. And in his letter to the Romans, he said, For our God, Jesus Christ, is more visible now that he is in the Father. Finally, there's Polycarp, who was also a student of John and the Bishop of Smyrna. He lived around the same time of Ignatius. In his letter to the Philippians, he said, Now may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the eternal High Priest himself, the Son of God Jesus Christ, build you up in faith and truth, and to us with you, and to all those under heaven who will yet believe in our Lord and God Jesus Christ, and in his Father who raised him from the dead. To say that no early Christian theologians thought that Jesus was Yahweh simply seems crazy to me. Now, where could these early Christian apologists and bishops got these exalted ideas about Jesus? Hmm, I wonder. In his letters, Tertullian names or quotes all of the New Testament books with the exception of James, 2 Peter, and 2 and 3 John. Clement of Alexandria names or quotes all of the New Testament books that we have with the exception of Philemon, 2 Peter, and 2 and 3 John. Irenaeus also names or quotes all of the New Testament books with the exception of Philemon, 2 Peter, 3 John, and Jude. Justin Martyr quotes all four of our Gospels, calling them the memoirs of the Apostles. In his one brief letter to the Philippians, Polycarp quotes 17 out of 27 of our New Testament books, including three of our four Gospels and 11 of the 13 Pauline letters. He also quotes Acts, 1 Peter, and 1 and 3 John in Hebrews. Polycarp refers to Peter and Paul by name and shows awareness of their martyrdom. 
And in our seven surviving letters to the churches, Ignatius quotes the gospel according to Matthew, Luke, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, Ephesians, Colossians, and 1 Thessalonians. Ignatius also mentions the apostles Peter and Paul by name. Maybe, just maybe, these early Christian theologians read 1 Corinthians 8.6, where Paul splits the Jewish Shema in two. The Jewish proclamation of one God is cast into two persons, God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just quickly take a look at the text. It reads, For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is only one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. In contrast to the many false gods present in pagan worship, there is only one God who is worthy of worship. It's widely accepted that Paul is clearly drawing upon the core of monotheistic confession of ancient Israel found in Deuteronomy 6.4 which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Using the same word Lord to describe him, Paul has now included the Lord Jesus Christ in the Shema. Paul isn't saying that Jesus is a second God, but rather he's including Jesus in the divine identity of Yahweh. This is confirmed by the fact that Paul attributes to Jesus the very same act of creation that he attributes to God when he says, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. In this case, Jesus is not the subject of creation, but is the creator himself. New Testament scholar Richard Bauckham concludes, a higher Christology that Paul expresses in 1 Corinthians 8.6 is scarcely possible and is the common character of all New Testament Christology. And I bet many of the fathers read Hebrews 1, 10 through 12, which quotes from Psalm 102, 25 through 27, which reads, You, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. Psalm 102 originally referred to Yahweh's creative activity in Genesis. The author now applies it to Jesus. Much more can be said about these texts, and I could go on and on, quoting more and more passages that confirm the belief that Jesus was Yahweh, but I think you get my drift. These are the texts that the early theologians were drawing their beliefs from. Again, it's really difficult for me to see how a scholar of Ehrman's stature missed this and sees it as some kind of recent innovation. The early church fathers clearly clearly taught that Jesus is Yahweh, because again and again the New Testament writers clearly taught that Jesus is Yahweh. Thanks for watching.